Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah ya nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdi Allahu fala mudilla la wa may yudlil fala hadiya la wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika la wa ashhadu anna sayyidina Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu amma ba'd yaqulu Allah ta'ala fil Qur'an al-'azim a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim bismillahi r-rahman r-rahim ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun sadaqallahu al-'azim all praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we glorify Allah we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessings his favors his bounties upon us i testify that there is none to be worshiped but Allah he is alone and he has no partner and i testify that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his servant and final messenger Allah, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed blessed us. He has given us the opportunity to witness this month of Ramadan, a month that has tremendous blessings, tremendous rewards. And we have come to the end, almost to the end of the month. We received Ramadan as a guest and we are seeing Ramadan, this guest about to leave us. In those who have experienced previous Ramadan, know the feeling when Ramadan leaves. That there has been so much accomplished during the blessed month of Ramadan and you don't want it to go. A believer looks for opportunities always to, to ensure that he or she makes more strivings in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, we live life in this way as believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where we pray and we give charity, we do some optional fasting and we enjoin ourselves in the doing of good and the staying away of evil. But there are times when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presents to us opportunities so that we can gain more in terms of rewards from our Creator. And one such time is the month of Ramadan where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a month that has many, many blessings. And as much as we have seen most of the month has gone, there is still the opportunity to reap tremendous rewards in these last days and nights of the month of Ramadan. We don't know for sure when is Laylatul Qadr? 
And we have heard the numerous ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, where he advises us to seek it in the last ten nights of Ramadan, the blessed nights, the most blessed nights of the year. In it is a night that is better than one thousand months. Allah describes it in the Quran as Layla Mubarakah, a blessed night. We don't know when it is. We look for it in these last ten nights. We still have opportunity to make sure that we increase our ibadah. Whether it is praying, making dua, doing dhikr, reciting the Quran, giving charity, we still have that opportunity to gain from these last days and nights of the month of Ramadan. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us that the night of Qadr, it's an opportunity for us to have forgiveness. Man qama laylat al-Qadr imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbi he who prays stands the night of qadr the night of decree the night of power the night of excellence he who stands this night in prayer with iman with faith and with the expectation of rewards from Allah, Allah will forgive him his sins. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, whenever you have a guest come to you, you treat that guest well as a host, and you look to see what that guest has brought you. Can you benefit from it? Is there something that you need to do with regards to what the guest came with? And so when we look at Ramadan, Ramadan as we bid farewell to it, it has brought us many lessons. And that's how we continue our lives. We take lessons from everything that happens in our lives. And so when we look at Ramadan, Ramadan has taught us patience. You were patient with regards to what Allah made lawful to you. You give up lawful for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Eating and drinking, it's lawful. But you gave it up for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us that patience, jaza'uhu al-jannah as-sabr, jaza'uhu al-jannah. Patience is reward is paradise. And so, you exercise tremendous patience during these days and nights of Ramadan. You give up, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, you give up passions and desires. You made sure that you were not a slave to lust and desires. 
But you give up everything for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah says in Hadith al-Qudsi with regards to fasting, Kullu amal ibn Adam lahu illa siyam fa innahu li wa ana ajzi bi. Every action of the son of Adam is for him except fasting. It is for me, it is for Allah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he will reward for it. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, it, it is not easy to give up that which is lawful to you. But each one of us, we did it because Allah commanded it. We had patience throughout the day. You could have eaten, you could have drank something, no one would have seen you. But you understand that Allah sees and He knows everything. And you are doing it for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so you are passionate and waiting for that time when you will be able to again take that which is halal when you break your fast. You are patient in terms of controlling yourselves. You control yourselves with regards to your temper, with regards to not quarreling, being gentle with people. And if someone, you know, attacks you, someone wants to fight with you, quarrel with you, you say to that person, in the saw him verily, I am fasting. That's the patience that you have exercised. And that's a quality of the muttaqun, the God-fearing ones. And that's what Ramadan is all about. We fast every day. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may achieve piety. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says about the people who have patience and they control themselves. He, he talks about them in the Quran and He describes them such. الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّى وَالْضَرَّى وَالْكَاذِمِينَ الْغَيْذُ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, and those who spend in ease and adversity, and more, more so, or more importantly, those who control their anger, they have patience. People say things to them, people do things to them that they do not like, they control their anger. And they are forgiving, and they continuously do good. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, this is what Ramadan has taught us. This is the lesson of Ramadan. Look at how we have so much compassion. Ramadan is the month of mercy, compassion. And in Ramadan, we exercise that compassion. We, we look at our brothers and sisters, and even though sometimes we are not uh, required to pay zakah because we haven't met the requirements in terms of nisab and in terms of the money being with you for a year, people still give in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of compassion, out of mercy, for their brothers and sisters. They cannot see, this is what the fasting has taught them. They cannot see their brothers and sisters going hungry because they understood from their fasting what hunger means and what thirst means. 
And, and, and so they are willing to share what Allah has given to them. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, the muttaqoon again, alladheena yunfiquna fi sarra wa dharra, those who spend in ease and in adversity. And so, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Ramadan came and it brought out that compassion within us. Those who were required to pay zakah, they paid. And still they're giving more. Compassion. And, and so when we leave Ramadan, we leave with that compassion because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Irhamu man fil ardi, irhamkum man fis sama. Be compassionate unto those who are on this earth and the one in the heavens will show compassion unto you. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Man la yarham la yurham. The one who does not show compassion will not have compassion shown unto him. And so Ramadan will leave us. But we take with us patience in every aspect of our lives. We, we need to have patience with our spouses, with our children, with our mothers and fathers, our parents. We need to have patience with our brothers and sisters. As leaders of masajid or institution or wherever, we need to have patience with those whom we serve. And that's what we take with us when we leave this month of Ramadan. Ramadan is leaving us, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, but we learned compassion during the month of Ramadan, and we need to take it with us as we exit this blessed month of Ramadan. Look at how much you have exerted yourselves during this blessed month of Ramadan. You know, it's not easy to stand behind a Hafiz al Quran reciting long portions of the Quran. It is not easy to stand behind a Qari reciting the entire Quran during the month of Ramadan, but you did it. Nawafil prayers. You, you woke up at night and you prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if you never did it before, when the month of Ramadan came, you stood at night and prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what Allah created us for. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I have only created jinn and men for the purpose of worshipping me. And so you continuously stood and worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You, you, you understood the meaning of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said, مَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانِ he who stands or observes Ramadan with Iman and with expectation of rewards, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive him his sins. And so night after night, you did not only focus on that Salatul Isha, but you made sure that you prayed that uh, Tarawi, Nawafil prayers, Tahajjud, you made sure that you were in constant worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Ramadan has taught us that we need to bow down regularly to our Creator. And so when Ramadan leaves us, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, there is still Salatul Tahajjud there is still the opportunity to stand at night while people are sleeping 
and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he tells us, he addressed the people, Ya ayyuhan nas, afshu as salam. He said to the people, spread peace. One of the things that he said in that hadith, he said, pray while people are sleeping. And at the end of the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, تَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ بِالسَّلَامِ if when you do these things, you will enter paradise in peace. And we all want to enter paradise, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. So, we don't only focus on our five daily prayers. We focus on those sunnah, the nawafil, and make, make sure that this, what we have done in Ramadan, we take it with us after Ramadan. Today, Jum'atul Wida, Masajid will not have space. Night after night, you found that many of the Masajid, they were overcrowded. People coming out to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That connection with the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ramadan has taught us that. And so when Ramadan leaves us, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, let us remain connected with the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only on Fridays, but every opportunity that we have Let's stay connected with the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us in the Quran, إِنَّمَا يَعْمُرُ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَأَقَامَ الصَّلَاةِ وَآتَ الزَّكَاةِ وَلَمْ يَخْشَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Those who will build, maintain, the maintenance of the masajid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these houses, it is not just, just the maintenance of the walls and, and the carpets, the floor, or the roof. We, we maintain the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by making sure they are not empty spaces. And that what it was uh, built for, that we make sure the purpose is being fulfilled. So Ramadan has taught us that just as how we come, and we fill the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the month of Ramadan. When Ramadan leaves us, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, continue to have that connection with the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ramadan, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, it renewed our connection with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, you might have memorized a lot of Qur'an, but when you stand at night and you listen to the Qur'an being recited, and you remember these verses that, or these surahs that you have memorized, it, it brings that uh, joy. It, it, it gives you that peace of mind and tranquility. That's dhikr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Qur'an, Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma'innul qulub. Verily through the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is comfort to the heart. And so when you stand at night and you listen to the beautiful words of the Qur'an, you, you, you have comfort, you have happiness, peace of mind. You're not thinking to run away. That when will this imam stop reading? It brings that peace of mind and comfort. That's what the Quran does. And so people spend so much time listening. People spend so much time reciting. People spend so much time pondering upon the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And there is blessings in everything that we do with regards to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my dear brothers and my dear sisters, just as how you spend time reciting the entire Qur'an or listening to the entire Qur'an or listening to part of it or reciting part of it, it make sure that you stay connected with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the month of Ramadan. That's what Ramadan has taught us. That's the lesson. And remember, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us that the siyam wal Qur'an yashfa'an lil abdi yawmul qiyamah fasting and this Qur'an this Qur'an that we are so much attached to during the month of Ramadan, this Qur'an that was revealed in the month of Ramadan, this Qur'an that was revealed in Layla Mubarakah, in a blessed night, in the night of Qadr, this Qur'an, it will intercede for us. And there is where the pondering and the, the internalization of the Qur'an and putting it into practice comes. When we do that, what happens on the Day of Judgment? We are being promised that this Qur'an, it will intercede on behalf of us. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, look at the beautiful gatherings during the month of Ramadan. Day after day, when you have the opportunity, you come and you break your fast with your brothers and sisters. You stand at night with them to pray. There is no other time in the year where you find this beautiful gathering, people coming out in masses. to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together. We are one big family, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. Never forget that. And it is said, the family that prays together stays together. And so you need to make sure that this is a lesson that you take with you after Ramadan. That you strengthen this brotherhood and sisterhood. It is not a once a year thing. But you look out for one another day after day. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, Alaykum bil jama'a. It is incumbent upon you to be with the group, to be with the family, to be with the gathering. The wolf eats the lonely sheep. If you are lonely and you stay away, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, it is you know, more likely that shaitan will have an effect over you. But when you are with good company, when you are people who pray and who fast and who give charity, people who are doing good things, it, it, it rubs off on you. And so you want to do the same like them. And so we are always encouraged to keep good company. Al-mar'u ala dini khalilihi fal yanzur ahadukum man yukhalil. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, a, a man, a person is upon the deen, the way of life of his friend. So look to whom you befriend. Spend time with people who are striving for taqwa, for piety, for righteousness, for God-fearingness. That's how we want to spend our lives. And if you look at Ramadan, this is what you did. Everyone who comes, they're, they're fasting, they're praying, they're, they're, they're demonstrating the qualities of the muttaqoon, the God-fearing ones. And so you spend time with them. This is a lesson we take after Ramadan, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, to make sure that we spend time with our brothers and sisters 
who will be of some source of uh, blessings for us because they will help us, they will guide us, they will keep us on the right path. And so it's difficult when Ramadan leaves us, people shed tears, people grieve when the month goes away. True believers, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, don't only shed tears and don't only grieve, but they make sure that whatever they have learned from the month of Ramadan, they take it with them. They continue the practices that they had done during the month of Ramadan. So I implore you, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, spend these last days and nights exerting yourselves more in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and keep contemplating, pondering, evaluating, looking at what was achieved during the month of Ramadan and make sincere intentions that you will continue to practice whatever you have learned during the month of Ramadan as we go into the other months of the year. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and have mercy upon us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our ibadat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And may he save us from the torment of hellfire. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum. Wa li sa'iru al-mu'minu minat min kulli dham. Fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, was salatu was salam wa ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in, Ridwanullahi alayhim ilayyum middin, amma ba'd. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, it's all about istiqama, it's all about steadfastness. It's all about commitment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us in the Quran, Inna ladina kalu rabbun Allah thumma istaqamu. Verily, those who say Allah is our Lord, they are steadfast, they are committed, they, they make sure that they keep their practices. It is not just lip service. Laysa al iman bit tamanni. وَلَكِنْ مَا وَقَرَ فِي الْقَلْبِ وَصَدَّقَهُ الْأَمَلِ Iman is not a mere wish or hope, but Iman is that which is registered in the heart and it is being approved by the limbs of the body. This is istiqama. When you are steadfast, you declare your belief and you are steadfast. Allah tells us at the time of death, the angels will come and say, Fear not, grieve not, but have glad tidings of Jannah that Allah has promised you. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was once asked by a man, tell me, Ya Rasulullah, something that if I do it, I would not have to ask anyone. Tell me something comprehensive about this deen. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Qul amantu billah thumma stakim. Say, I believe in Allah, and then be steadfast, be committed. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, this Ramadan has been a, a very difficult Ramadan in that we, we have seen the suffering of our brothers and sisters 
in all parts of the world. Especially in those in Gaza, in Palestine. And so I, I ask you to take another lesson from the month of Ramadan in that always be concerned about this Ummah. You are part of this Ummah. Only when you are concerned about this Ummah, so says Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tells us that Man lam yahtam bi amril muslimin falaysa minhum If you are not concerned with the affairs of the Muslims, you are not from among them. And so develop this uh, attitude of always looking to show care and concern for others. This deen is not about being selfish, but this deen is all about being selfless, that we think about others and we give up even though we have to give up what we love best. That even though we do not have, we look to give to others or to help others. And so, as you exit Ramadan, think about this ummah and the concern for the ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us rewards for every good act that we have done during the blessed month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our shortcomings, any mistakes that we have made knowingly or unknowingly. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and keep us safe. Laqad Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fil Qur'an al -Azim. I thought, in Allah, who Malay, Katahu, your saluna, Alan Nabi. Ya, you had Ladina Amman who salu, Alay, who was salim, who to sleep. Allah, who must salli, was salim, Alam, Nika, or Sudika, Mohammed, who are the Allah, who man, who left a heel or bar, Abi Bakar, or Umar Uthman, or Ali, one is sitting till back in over Sharina Biljana, one say it is Sahaba. ونتابعين ومن تبعهم بسان لا يوم الدين اللهم عز إسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر عبادك المستضعفين في غزة وفي فلسطين وفي كل مكان اللهم انصرهم اللهم تقبل منا صيامنا وصلاتنا وقيامنا وقعودنا وركوعنا وسجودنا اللهم تقبل منا أعمالنا الصالحة اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم عباد الله إن الله يمر بالعدل واللسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي ذكم لكم تذكرون فاشكروا فاشكروا الله على نعمه واذكروه على آلائه ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أكمل الصلاة